Hello again, everyone. Welcome to Washington Gun Law TV. I am Washington Gun Law President William Kirk. Thanks for joining us. Hey, now that the dust has finally started to settle from all of this shenanigans involving forced reset triggers, wide open triggers, solvent traps, and all of that sort of stuff, we can start once again refocusing on the new and pending rules from the ATF as it relates to firearms with attached stabilizing braces. Now, there have been a lot of rumors kicking around out here in the YouTube verse about what you can and cannot do, and if you remove your stabilizing brace, what you must or must not do with it. We're going to try to clear some of that confusion up today by taking a look at, well, the rule itself. So today, let's spend a few minutes and talk about all the terrible choices ATF will leave you with for your pistol braces. Okay, so the issue we're talking about today is ATF Rule 2021R-08, better known as ATF's new rule on the factoring criteria for firearms with attached stabilizing braces. Now, as we know, uh, this rule was originally published and then pulled back, and it's going to be republished in December, which means it will be effective in April, and we will have 120 days to figure out what this all means. Now, in the meantime, we've already done a bunch of videos about the ATF's new form 4999, the scoring system that they got, and how they're going to determine whether it's an SBR or actually an AR pistol. And then we've done another series of videos, and I do want you to pay careful attention to those ones about what a trap we think this whole amnesty registration may be. What I want to talk to you about today is, is we went through the rule itself and what we basically did is we did a word search for two words in that and that is destroy or destruction because we wanted to figure out if we are in fact going to remove our pistol braces from our firearms, do we then have to destroy them as some people believe? And it is my professional opinion after reading the version of the rule that's been published now. Granted, subject to change when the new rule is published, but as I read this rule now, no, I do not believe that you need to destroy your stabilizing braces. Now, in the rule itself, 88 pages of it, I went through and did a very thorough search, a word search, as I mentioned earlier, and we got to a section where ATF does discuss five different options for how you can deal with the implementation of this rule. Now, Oftentimes, as a criminal defense lawyer, I have to give clients the bad news that we have two choices and one's getting punched in the mouth and the other one's getting kicked in the shins. And we're going to have to select one of those. And unfortunately, when we take a look at the five choices that ATF has given us, yes, this is much akin to either getting punched in the mouth or kicked in the shins. But I do want you to be aware of this. Now, as a side note, I know many of you get all freaked out when I start quoting ATF saying, hey, this is the gospel. I am not endorsing what ATF is saying here. I'm saying that, listen, this is the words that they've chosen. Here's what they mean. And you all get to decide what that means to you. And you all get to decide what your level of compliance is going to be. So this is in no way, shape, or form an endorsement of ATF's rulemaking here, okay? Now, the rule in this particular section starts off with the following very euphemistic statement. As mentioned, ATF wants to assist affected persons or companies and is providing additional information to aid them in complying with federal laws and regulations. Below are options for those persons that may be affected upon publication of the final rule. And we certainly appreciate the full service opportunity that the ATF provides its consumers. But before we get to the five options, this is the preamble that ATF states in the rule itself. In order to comply with the provisions of the NFA, current unlicensed possessors of a firearm equipped with a stabilizing brace and a barrel length of less than 16 inches that would qualify as a short barrel rifle, as indicated on the ATF Worksheet 4999 contained in this proposed rule, would need to take one of the following actions before the effective date of the final rule. So, if you have an AR pistol, which means you have a barrel less than 16 inches, and you score four points or more on the 4999, and of course you don't know whether you score four points or more, and we will, as mentioned, be doing a series of videos. We're going to be starting to shooting those next week about this exact issue called Ask the FFL, and we'll go through that in greater detail with you. 
But if you believe that you have an AR pistol that's actually going to score four points or more under $49.99, these are your five options. Option number one is, one, permanently remove or alter the stabilizing brace such that it cannot be reattached, thus converting the firearm back to its original pistol configuration as long as it was originally configured without a stock and as a pistol, and thereby removing it from the regulations as a firearm under the NFA. Exercising this option would mean the pistol would no longer be equipped with the stabilizing brace within the meaning of the proposed rule. So what ATF is saying here is, listen, if you take the pistol brace off, we no longer have a firearm with an attached stabilizing brace, and therefore we're not going to factor any of this criteria. Now, where the big question or concern is, is do we then have to destroy that pistol brace? And I want you to pay careful attention to the language here. Permanently remove or alter the stabilizing brace such that it cannot be reattached. And again, the type of brace, the type of buffer tube that we're using, there's a lot of different things that go in this, but there is nothing in here that states that the pistol stabilizing brace itself has to be destroyed. And let's remember that these are not serialized parts. For many of us, we might have bought these things post-production, post-market, and there is no way to trace these bra braces back to you individually. Now, the ATF also gives us a couple of other options, including option number two, two. Remove the short barrel and attach a 16-inch or longer barrel to the firearm, thus removing it from the provisions of the NFA. And we've done a video on that already, this one right here. And yeah, if you take a 10.5-inch upper receiver off that firearm, put a 16-inch barrel on it, even with the pistol receiver, you now have a rifle. It is out. It is no longer an AR pistol. It cannot be a short barrel rifle by definition. And now you have a firearm which is no longer subject to these regulations. Now, there's a lot of tactical and proficiency concerns that you need. And candidly, if you're going to drop a 16-inch upper receiver onto the platform at that point, uh, with a 16-inch barrel, you might as well go ahead and take the pistol brace off and drop a rifle stock on it, but I leave those choices to you. The third option ATF gives us is destroy the firearm. ATF will publish information regarding proper destruction on its website, www.atf.gov. And again, really appreciate the full service that the ATF is providing. Yeah, I don't think that this is a viable option. This really does rank up in the punch in the mouth, kicked in the shin, knee in the groin. Um, but yeah, destruction of a firearm obviously is an option. It is not one that we are recommending. It is not one that we are endorsing. The fourth option that ATF gives you is four, turn the firearm into your local ATF office. Uh, yeah, no. Uh, that one is about as pleasurable as actually destroying your firearm. So options number three and four, we appreciate the ATF giving us those options. We do not believe that either one of those are necessary. The final option, option number five is five, complete and submit an application to make and register a firearm, ATF Form 1. As part of the submission, the $200 tax payment is required with the application. Pursuant to 27 CFR 479.102, the name, city, and the state of the maker of the firearm must be properly marked on the firearm. All other markings placed by the original manufacturer should be adopted. Proof of submission of the Form 1 should be maintained by all possessors. Documentation establishing submission of Form 1 includes, but is not limited to, e-form submission acknowledgement, proof of payment, or a copy of a Form 1 submission with a postmark documentation. And so a couple things to point out here. They're saying, yeah, you go ahead and fill out the Form 1 and go ahead and make this an NFA item. We've already done a video about why you shouldn't give in on that, this one right here. But I thought this was an amnesty registration period, and they're saying, hey, no, 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 wait a second, you got to pay the $200 tax stamp. So what exactly is the amnesty? Let us remember that amnesty is a term of art, a actual term of art that means that an individual has committed an illegal act and government is now going to forgive them for committing that act. Folks, these were AR pistols that were absolutely bought within the confines of the law. None of you, none of you broke any law. Where is there to get amnesty from? So, in conclusion, do I believe that removing the pistol brace removes the firearm from the confines of $49.99 in this entire new rulemaking order? Yes, I do. 
Do I believe that there is clear evidence that once the pistol brace is removed, you must destroy it? No, I don't. Listen, there's going to be a lot more developments. We're going to learn a lot more. I'm going to tear through this rule a lot more, and then we're going to be sitting down with Kyle Metcalf over at Security Gun Club, and we're going to be doing an entire series of videos about Form 4999. Again, it's called Ask the FFL. In the meantime, if you have any more questions about this, or anything else related to your Second Amendment rights, remember, you can always contact us at WashingtonGunLaw.com or you can call us directly at 425-765-0487. Now, let's remember, part of being a lawful and responsible gun owner, like we talk about all the time here at Washington Gun Law, is to know what the law is in every situation and how it applies to you in any instance that you may find yourself. Until next time, thanks for watching. Stay safe.